Hello and welcome to another week of meals. I've got four meals for you starting off with this really simple Filipino sweet pork longanisa sausage. Uh, we usually eat these for breakfast but I'm doing them for dinner this evening. I'm just cooking them in the skillet with a bit of water to make sure they're fully cooked um, before I brown them up. Once the water has evaporated more or less and uh, the sausages are cooked I'm, cooked, I'm taking a little knife and pricking them to release uh, some of the fat. Now you'll see these are gushers. Oop, you see that little bit right there? Yeah, the fat kind of just gushed out of them. So I'm doing that again just to release a bit of that fat and then I'm going to cook the sausages in that. Give them a nice, ooh, <laughs> nice brown and caramelized uh, finish to them. These are really, really sweet, so there is a bit of sugar. I think it's sugar. I'm not sure exactly what they use to make them really sweet, but you'll see it caramelizes, and you'll see these sticky, sweet, uh, sugary strands from some of these links. Just moving these around to make sure they don't stick to the skillet and once they're pretty much all said and done I'm gonna serve these just with some plain white rice uh, you could serve it with like a dinner roll that would be good um, we usually normally eat these links with some eggs you know as I mentioned these are usually eaten at breakfast time um, but I'm just doing sausages and rice tonight super simple I believe I was actually fasting so I abstained from dinner this evening uh, but the guys did have just the sausages with rice very easy for a first night of the week next dinner we have for you is haluski and some smoked sausage this is polska kielbasa that I'm using it's basically some egg noodles, white egg noodles with cabbage and some bacon and smoked sausage. So I am taking the olive oil and I'm going to start rendering the bacon. I'm not sure why I added oil to this since we all know bacon just gives off so much fat and so much grease. And I apologize again if you can hear my dogs in the background, she's barking. Um, but I'm going to render that until that is cooked through to my liking. A bit crispy. Um, I like my bacon a little on the softer side, so that's what I'm doing doing here. Taking my spider and removing it now, uh, leaving the bacon grease in the pan, and then I'm going to proceed to cook some of the rest of the ingredients in that bacon grease. Okay, adding the Polska kielbasa to that bacon grease. I'm just gonna cook these up until they're browned, more or less. Um, they're, they're, it's pretty much already cooked through. I just wanna brown them a little bit uh, to get a bit of the crispy edges that I kinda like. Uh, so just cook that to your liking, and then uh, we're going to set that aside and move on with the rest of the recipe. As per usual, any recipes that I have the link for will be in the description box down below. So feel free to check out the timestamps to um, you know, navigate throughout this video as well as check out the recipes for the meals that I'm showing you today. Okay, sauteing the onions and the garlic. And as those aromatics begin to give off a bit of their juices, it's gonna make deglazing this pan and scraping the brown bits that are left over from the bacon and the sausage a little bit easier. So that is some sweetener that I'm putting in. The recipe I believe calls for sugar. Again, as I have mentioned in previous videos, I like to substitute with monk fruit, monk fruit sweetener when I can, just to reduce a bit of the sugar. So um, that's what I'm doing here. See, nice and brown and caramelized. Um, and then uh, we're just going to add the cabbage, cook that down, and we're going to be really close to being done here. So just adding that cabbage, I'm going to 
pop a lid on just to get it to wilt down and cook down a little bit to make tossing this and turning this a, a little bit easier. Okay, there you go. You can see a bit of steam now is coming off. Um, we've got some liquid that is coming off from the cabbage, making it a lot easier to sort of um, stir this around. And now I'm going to make sure that I have the uh, cabbage seasoned. So we've got some salt. Uh, we've got some pepper that I'm going to sprinkle in here. And then as always, I am going to do a little quick taste test to make sure I don't need any more salt or pepper or sweetener. So I'm doing that right here. And once I'm satisfied, I am going to pop um, some salt into the water that I have boiling in the background so that I can get the egg noodle started. I didn't want to boil these too far in advance um, since I didn't want them to get too soft or mushy. So I've just got some wide egg noodles in here that I'm going to cook off. And then we're going to just combine both of the pots together and we'll have dinner ready. That was a huge knob of butter that I stuck into the noodles. So that is part of the recipe. I'm just putting that in there. Keep the noodles separated as well. Here we go. All of the uh, sausages and then we're going to add a bit of, well actually not all of the sausages. I did set aside a bit of the sausage and the bacon and the cabbage because this pot was a little bit too small. <laughs> so I'm just adding as much as I can in here to create a complete dinner. So I'm going to mix that around the cabbage and all the sweet onions, um, the garlic, and then we've got the salty bacon and, um, and the sausage in here with the buttery egg noodles. Now I have a similar recipe that uses potatoes um, in lieu of the noodles. I'll link up in the cards above, but that is our dinner for the second evening. So delicious, really, really easy. We had a couple of rainy nights this week and I thought soup would just be the perfect foil to those dreary evenings. So I am making some tomato soup with grilled cheese, that perfect comfort food for those yucky yucky nights. <laughs> so I'm starting off with uh, slicing some Roma tomatoes. Now the recipe said to slice them lengthwise. I don't know why I just sliced them in half. Perhaps the recipe meant to slice them lengthwise in thinner slices, but that's not what I did. <laughs> I also did not use a rimmed baking sheet, which I would suggest that you use. Um, the olive oil can get a bit drippy and you don't want to grease fire in your oven. So what I ended up doing was soaking up some of that olive oil so I didn't have that problem in my oven. But I'm seasoning the Roma tomatoes now with some salt and some pepper, and then those are gonna go into the oven to roast away. After I checked the tomatoes, I thought, you know what, I'm not sure if the recipe meant to slice them lengthwise, and these are quite large tomatoes, so I'm going to go ahead and slice them again just to make them a little bit smaller, to make them cook and roast a little bit faster, and um, just, just to make the process a bit easier. Uh, it may be perhaps a compromise between my interpretation and the actual recipe itself. So that's what I'm doing here, and then I'm going to put them back into the oven to finish roasting. And there you go, the finished roasted tomatoes. Uh, you can do these a little bit longer if you'd like. I went ahead and pulled them out. They will get more caramelized if you did them in, into thinner, um, thinner slices. 
uh, but this is what I have uh, for my tomatoes. <laughs> I'm moving on to the rest of the ingredients now. I'm going to saute some of the rest of the ingredients. So we've got onions and garlic, those nice aromatics. I'm going to make this soup so good. And the soup was really, really delicious, so I do recommend that you give this one a try. Once you've got some color on there and the onions are nice and translucent, I am adding some pepper and some salt to this. I also have, I believe that's oregano. Again, do check the links for the recipe down below. Next up, I have two cans of Italian-style stewed tomatoes. Now, the recipe calls for 28 ounces of San Marzano, um, San Marzano, uh, what do you call them, <laughs> canned tomatoes. I couldn't find them at the store that I went to, so I just went with these. Um, I'm also breaking up some basil to put into the soup, and then um, we're going to let that cook down, let everything sort of meld together um, before we move on. And that, again, was a bit of monk fruit in lieu of sugar. And we're going to mix that, as I mentioned, and just let that cook through until everything mixes and blends well together. I'm just breaking up the tomatoes just a little bit so it mixes nicely. Uh, we are going to blend this up, but just to get more of that tomato flavor in there, mixing together with all the ingredients. Um, I am doing that, and then again, just stir it around till everything is nice and combined. We've got some chicken bouillon that I mixed with some water. I believe the recipe calls for chicken broth or chicken stock, but I use this and then give it a little whiff to make sure things smell right. Now adding those lovely um, roasted tomatoes and all of the juices that I was able to collect from the baking sheet. And I let that cook for a little bit, a little simmer, again, to get all the flavors going, breaking things up if I possibly can. And then we're gonna go in with the immersion blender. Now, if you don't have an immersion blender, obviously go ahead and use your regular blender or Vitamix or whatever you happen to have. Um, you just want to get that nice and smooth, as smooth as you like. Uh, with the immersion blender, I'm not able to get it down to like silky, silky smooth, but I don't mind that. I do like a bit of the tomato chunks in, and you'll see I, uh, I accidentally leave a bunch of uh, basil in there, but it doesn't matter to me. I, I do like a bit of texture in my soup, so a little bit of a taste to adjust any seasonings if necessary. And then I'm gonna add some heavy cream. Now you can follow the recipe exactly, obviously, if you'd like, or especially for the first time if you've never made this before, which I haven't, <laughs> but I do like to take liberties with my recipes and just taste as I go. I will add a bit of heavy cream to my individual serving because that's just the way I like it. But, you know, just play it by ear and go with, you know, what your palate prefers. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much the tomato soup 
and now I'm going to move on to the grilled cheese. This is how I like to do it. Uh, we've got some sourdough that I have butter and then I'm going to sprinkle some Parmesan cheese, put that on the outside of the bread. This is basically going to be like a Parmesan Romano encrusted <laughs> grilled cheese sandwich. Very fancy, I know. So that's going to go down into a hot pan. Um, we've got some American, oh, is that American? Yeah, I think that's uh, deluxe American cheese. And then I'm going to add some Havarti in there. Use any cheeses that you like, as much or as little as you want. And then I'm going to um, top that with the top piece, again, coated with butter and Parmesan cheese. And then we're going to let that cook down under a lid so that the cheese gets nice and melty. After a couple minutes, um, I just checked to see to make sure the cheese is melty. That was cooked on like a low, medium low, just to make sure that the cheese and the bread doesn't uh, doesn't burn, but that the cheese on the inside is melted. Give that a little flip, adjust the bread, <laughs> anything that's shifted, and then I'm going to continue to cook that on a medium heat uh, without the lid so that it can stay nice and crisp. And there you go, finished tomato soup with uh, some, um, some Parmesan cheese and basil, and then we have the toasty melty grilled cheese on the side for the rainy evening this is what rob and i had and then colin is a dipper when it comes to grilled cheese so he just has a small portion of the tomato soup and that was our rainy day dinner Next evening, I wanted to use up this clearance ground beef uh, patties, hamburger patties that I found at the store. So I'm just gonna cook those in the skillet and then turn my focus to my fries. So Colin is gonna eat some regular uh, waffle potato fries, but I'm doing these buffalo, buffalo style uh, potato waffle fries <laughs> for the adults. I just cooked those off in the air fryer. Recipe for this will be down below. Basically just adding some wing sauce. I start off with just a little bit of it because I didn't want to drown uh, drown the fries. Uh, the, the tip in the recipe is to cook these off in the air fryer until they're extra crispy so they stay so they don't get too soggy. But um, I found that it didn't really matter to me whether or not they were super crispy or not and um, so again I'm just tossing these in the hot sauce I'm using Frank's buffalo hot sauce here I'm gonna add a little bit more to cover and coat some of the uh, waffle fries now this sauce I found to be a little bit too salty for my liking so I might just um, use the buffalo sauce as perhaps a dip next time or just drizzle a lot less of the sauce onto the waffle fries but to each his own you just kind of do you do it and you know add a little bit at a time and see what you like into the baking dish these waffle fries go I'm just gonna arrange it till they're nice and flat in a single layer more or less with some shredded cheese that goes into the oven until it's nice and melted you can add more cheese if you like and then we've got some ranch dressing that I'm just going to drizzle on top along with some blue cheese there's that blue cheese right here I'll make it sort of like buffalo wing style and some uh, sliced up green onions so that is pretty much the fancy fries. These would be great for Super Bowl Sunday or any other event where you need an appetizer. These were really, really good. Uh, as I mentioned, the sauce was a little bit salty for me, um, but I'll just take it down a notch next time. But look, so much flavor. Serve these with the burgers. Um, Colin just had his burger super plain as usual, just cheese and uh, ketchup. I did those in the air fryer, got a little bit toasty and serving up these uh, potatoes for B and Rob. We had fancier burgers with uh, grilled onions and uh, pickles and you know all kinds of fillings that we like. So that is pretty much the dinner. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's meals. Um, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate your time. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I will see you in the next video. Take care guys.